Okay, here is example two, sections 4.3, 4.4. So we're again looking at indeterminate axial uh, problems, just with forces without temperature at this point. So we have column AB, that should be capitalized, is made from high strength precast concrete and reinforced with four three quarter inch diameter A36 steel rods. So there's the cross section, okay? Determine the maximum allowable floor loadings P. The allowable normal stresses for the concrete and the steel are given. Okay, so this time we don't know what this value is, okay? We have to determine that. So we have determined what the loads are um, in the first part of chapter four where it wasn't indeterminate, but we still had to go through the different failure modes. So here we have concrete and steel. So we're gonna have to find um, the relationship between the loads and the forces in the material and the relationship between the deformation. And then we're gonna have to assume, well, what if the steel fails? What could load P be? What if the concrete fails? What could load P be? And then pick the, the maximum allowable, which is gonna be that smallest value. So just like we do with every other problem, um, we are given the allowable stresses, okay? And what I do need to know is I need to know, and I can use that same chart I used in the last problem, that um, my E for concrete, and I'm just going to put it right by the concrete. I'm actually, yeah, just right below there, um, is uh, when we're looking at concrete, it's going to be 4.2. It's the high strength, so 4.2 times 10 to the 3, um, and this is in KSI. And then we should know what the steel is right now, but it's 29 times 10 to the third, also KSI. So we have all of our values, okay? So um, I'm going to start with equilibrium, or you can call it statics or whatever you want. So let's start with that free body diagram. So the free body diagram is as I have these compressive forces coming down, the force in the steel and the force in the concrete, both are working to push it back up, and I can't just divide it in half. So our free body diagram is going to look something like this, and we're just gonna kind of simplify it. Okay, so I've cut it right here, and so I'm going to have to have um, the uh, force of the steel and the force of the concrete. And what I wanna note is I have one, two, three, four steel bars, cause I really just want the force in one steel bar so that when I'm looking at that limiting stress, I'm gonna deal with one cross-sectional area. Or I could call it just force in the steel and recognize that when I'm looking at the areas, it's going to be four areas. So you need to keep up with how do you wanna work this? So I'm gonna call it four steels and then recognize it's just gonna be the area of one bar when I go back to calculate that stress. Okay, and then what I have pushing down is two times P. So if I sum my forces in the Y direction, okay, I'm going to have minus two P plus force steel plus force concrete equals zero. So I could simplify this if I wanted to, force steel plus force concrete equals two P. And that's what we're trying to back calculate. So at this point we have one, two, three unknowns. Okay, so now as I'm looking at these internal bars, I know they're both going to be in compression. I know that if I want to consider these, the reactions at the force of the steel and the force of the concrete at this point is what I'm considering this time. It's not a reaction at B, and how does that relate? So we can just call it force steel and force concrete. Um, except that, oh my gosh, I can't even copy over that number four. What a goofball. Plot a goofball plus four, and I still can't make a four, can I? Plus four times force steel, and then we got force steel plus force concrete, okay? So this is going to be our first equation, our first relationship. Our second is going to be compatibility. How are these, uh, how do they work together as a unit? Compatibility. Okay, so compatibility speaking, I know that the deformation of the steel has to equal the deformation of the concrete because they are both being smushed down. If they are truly bonded between the steel and the concrete, then the, the, the displacement of the steel 
has to equal that displacement of the concrete. And when I'm looking at the displacement, okay, I need to make sure if I'm putting in all of the steel, I need to make sure I have all of that area. You just have to be consistent. And what is our equation for change in length? It is, okay, the force in the steel, the length of the steel, the area of the steel, the E of the steel has to equal the force in the concrete, the length of the concrete, the area of concrete, and the E of concrete. Okay, so what is the force in that steel? The force in the steel, there's actually four steel bars, um, but we can look at the force it being all of them and then all of the areas or we can just say you know one force in the steel which is we've already taken care of that is just one area so we have force in the steel the length is okay that's 120 inches remember everything has to be kips and inches so we have 120 inches okay in the steel we're just going to consider that one bar because we've already are doing this by four so we have pi over four and that area of a bar it's three quarter inch, three quarter inch diameter squared. And then we have 29 times 10 to the third KSI. Equals the force in the concrete, the length of the concrete, the area of the concrete. And this is where we can't just call it 81 inches squared. We have to subtract out the diameter of those bars because they are taking up space. Maybe, and I don't have any lead, so let's just go here with a black pen that we can possibly erase. Let's see, there's one. Okay, so I have to take out the area of those four. So I have four times pi over four, and then I have that d squared. Okay, and then the modulus of elasticity is 4.2 times 10 to the third. So I'm gonna simplify. Well, an easy way to do that is I can note that there's a 10 to the third on both sides and we have the same length, okay? We can't get rid of the pi over the four because that 81 is not included. So let's see what we get here. So I'm gonna get pi as a number four divided by 0.75 times, 0.75 times, 29 times, okay? And I'm gonna take the reciprocal of it to multiply by this side. So times 120, but we took that away. So now we have 100 or 81. And then I have four enter, pi is a number. Let's see, I have 81, those fours go away. So I have pi as a number. And then I have 0.75 times, 0.75 times, and 4.2 times. Okay, good night. Drop that back out. 81 enter. Fours go away. I need to put another bracket there because I confused myself. Okay, pi. And then I have 0.75 times, 0.75 times. And I'm going to subtract. That takes care of my steel in my area. And then times 4.2. That's my E. And then we can divide. And when we do this, we get a very, very tiny number. Okay, we get a very, very tiny number over here. If we take the Let me do that again. So pi is a number, four divided by 0.75 times, 0.75 times, 29 times. Pi is a number, 4 divided by 0.75 times, 0.75 times, 29 times. So there's that. Then over here, we're going to have 81, enter, 9 times 9. The 4s go away. Pi as a number, 0.75 times, 0.75 times, minus 4.2 times. Okay? So this is on the bottom, so I'm going to take the reciprocal put it on the top and then I'm going to cross multiply and I get that and that. So I can either write that the force in the steel 
is 3.8499564 times 10 to the negative 2 FC, or I can write it as 25.97432 FS equals FC. So I have that relationship, and I have where those fit back in here, but I still have two unknowns, still have two unknowns. So now we have to look at, so we have our compatibility, we have our equilibrium. Now we're going to have to look at the controlling material. Okay, so if our controlling material is steel, the steel, then we need to look at our, 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 normal, our allowable stress of steel, which is 24 KSI, that's our allowable. KSI, which equals the force in the steel divided by the area of steel, okay? So here's where I can either put four times the force of steel, or I can simply put the force of one steel divided by the area of one steel, and that's what I have here. So let's look at the force of the steel equals, force of the steel equals, pi over 4.75 squared. So I'm going to get that the force in the steel equals, so we have 24 enter, pi is a number, 4 divided by 0.75 times, 0.75 times, cross multiply times, and I get the force in the steel could be equal to 10.6 kips. And if that's 10.6 kips, then I can calculate so now I can calculate that the force in the concrete, okay, so now the force in the concrete equals 25.97432 force of steel. So that's going to give us 275.4 kips. And now that I know the force in the concrete and the force in the steel, I can go back and calculate P. So 2P equals 4 force steel plus force concrete equals 4 times 10.6 plus 275.4. And then we'll divide by 2. So P equals, so we have 2275 and then we have 4 in our 10.6 times. We can add those together, divide by 2, and I get that P equals 158.9 kips. And this is if our controlling material is the steel. Okay? That's what we get. What if the controlling material... is concrete? Okay. So here we would be limited by the allowable stress of the concrete, which is 2.5 KSI. And that is going to be the force of the concrete divided by the area of concrete, which is the force of the concrete divided by, and we have to do that big number again, 81 minus 4 times pi over 4.75 squared. So the force of the concrete here is going to be the 2.5 enter, 81 enter, 4 enter, divided by um, pi is a number times 0.75 times 0.75 times subtract that from 81 we get 79.23 we're going to multiply that by 2.5 and I get 198.08 so this time the force of our concrete is 198.08 kips and that means that the force of the steel which is 3.849956.4 times 10 to the negative 2 force of concrete. So our force of steel equals 3.849956.4 e to the negative 2 times. Um, the force in the steel is uh, 7.626 kips. And so now if we go back, um, to equilibrium, 2P equals 4FS plus FC. So we have 2 equals 4 times 7.6 plus 198. And so P, we have 
four times that. And then um, where did that 158 come from? Now I'm concerned where, oh, that came from over here. So I should have, let's see, four enter 7.6 times 198 plus 228.4 divided by two, and I get 114.2 kips. So this is what would cause failure of the concrete. So we could load 158.9 for steel yielding, 114.2 for concrete yielding. So we can see that concrete controls, concrete controls. So P equals 114.2 kips. And there you go, your equilibrium, your compatibility, your compatibility relationships. So these are kind of like your equation two. And then going through the controlling to figure out which force controls.